and welcome back to Noah's Window. Today we're going to look in the book of the Revelation, and uh, if you haven't already, I would encourage you as we're reading through this book, if you're joining us in the one-year Bible, that you might want to go revisit the series from last summer. And then also, um, in our book-by-book -book class, mm -hmm. um, tomorrow night, we're going to be introducing the book of the Revelation in our study. So. Um, in this particular passage that we're looking at today, Mark, it's in uh, chapter 3, and this is in the section where uh, the Lord is sending a message to some particular churches. There's seven churches, and the one that we're looking at today is Laodicea. And um, I just find it intriguing, um, this passage. So let me jump in a little bit here, and um, oh, along about, let's jump in in verse 15. And this is God talking to the church at Laodicea. I know that all the things you do, that you're neither hot nor cold. I wish that you were one or the other. But since you are lukewarm water, like lukewarm water, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. You say, this is what the people in Laodicea are saying, I'm rich, I have everything I want. I don't need a thing. But God says, and you don't realize that you are wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. Um, and then he goes on to say, I suggest that you buy gold from me. Mm -hmm. uh, talk about that a little bit more. Well, when <laughs> Jesus appears to John on the island of Patmos and he gives a message to all seven churches, the term I've used through the years in teaching Revelation is Jesus gives each church a report card. And the most blistering report card is to this church at Laodicea. Um, and it appears that this church among the seven churches uh, had all the money they needed, they had all the facilities they needed, and they not only were proud of not needing anything, like you pointed out, that pride manifested itself in indifference. Yes. And the Lord was saying to them, you've got to deal with this or else I'm going to basically remove your charter. And it's, 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 it's important to realize Jesus isn't talking to unbelievers here, he's talking to his church, he's talking to it to uh, the people that claim to be followers of Jesus. But because of their wealth, they had become indifferent and they were not functioning and behaving like a church. So I think <clears throat> thinking about that in, in terms of our modern culture and modern Christianity, there is a danger when we're comfortable. Mm -hmm. When we, you know, it's like we've said so many times, when we're in the blessings of God, we can become so comfortable that we lose sight of what's important and focus only on ourselves. Well, through the years, whenever I've read this part of the book of Revelation, I've always had butterflies in my stomach when we get to the message to the church at Laodicea because it just sounds like it's so much written to the American church. Mm -hmm. um, it's interesting that there are contrasts among the seven churches. There's a church at uh, Smyrna, which is mentioned early in this list, and Jesus said to them, you say you're poor. Well, they were going through great persecution and Jesus said, but I say to you, you're rich. Mm -hmm. Well, when I think about that, I think about persecuted Christians in places like India mm -hmm. and parts of Africa and parts of the Arab world or Muslim world. Um, but yet Jesus said to this church at, at Laodicea, you think you're rich, but I'm telling you, you're poor, blind, miserable, wretched, and naked. And to go to the verse that you quoted a few moments ago, when Jesus said, I'm count counseling you to buy my gold, from gold me. tried in the fire. <clears throat> I, it, it is it, it, okay, and I think I even said this last summer when I was teaching on this particular church. When the Lord said buy, He's not talking about spending money because if He was, this church would have no problem doing that. But when He said, I'm, I'm counseling you to buy gold that's been refined, I think He was saying, I want to see some sacrifice, I want to see something inside of you that recognizes that. Although salvation is free, serving God has a cost associated with it, especially if we're serving with all of our hearts. And the Lord was saying, I want to see some evidence from you that you're willing to sacrifice. Mm. And as you mentioned at the end of that passage, he ends with turn from your indifference. Mm -hmm. And so I think when we get so comfortable, we can become indifferent to others. And I just want to point out, um, I think that's one of the things that's so wonderful about New Spring Church at this time of year, yeah. when we're taking this offering for um, Project Generosity. And just to point out something here, um, everyone who participates in that offering is not looking for praise, or they, right. they wouldn't be, because they know this is going to help people that are really hurting, and nobody's ever gonna call their name except God. God mm -hmm. knows uh, when we sacrifice to help others 
even if there's no attention called to it. But I, I do find this intriguing, this, this whole exchange here with this church, because it had to be dumbfounding to them. Yes. When they thought they had it made. They thought they had everything. They were incredibly comfortable. And it almost reminds me of that old um, fable about the emperor that has no clothes. Yes, it is. You know, That's a great old You feel like you're strutting around because you got everything you got. And, and uh, God says, I don't know if you realize this, but but you don't have any. You're blind and naked. And Well, <clears throat> almost all these churches got it wrong. Mm -hmm. at least as far as self-analysis went. I mean, you got the church at Ephesus that was so, and this is the first church, first church mentioned there, they were strong in doctrine, they were strong in hard work. I mean, I think they would have thought they were a fastidious church, grinding it out, and yet the mm -hmm. Lord said, you've left your first law. And as mm -hmm. I've already mentioned, the church at Smyrna, they thought they were destitute and poor, and yet the Lord said, because of your heart, you're, you're rich, there's the church of Sardis where the Lord said, you have a reputation for being alive, but you're dead. Mm. And, and now we look at uh, this church in Laodicea and clearly they thought, wow, we're the, most, we're, we're the most prosperous church in the world. And yet, as you point out, they, uh, the, Lord, the way the Lord saw them, he saw them very differently. Another thing about the seven churches, to me, these seven churches represent seven different kinds of believers mm. that can be in any church. Mm. Well, I know the one thing that I walk away from that whole section of Scripture is I just want to approach the Lord and ask Him to show me yeah, what I need I, to I see and what I need I, to change in my life because I, I want to know the truth <clears throat> about my relationship with Him and, and, and how He wants me to live. Well, I think that's a perfect place to end this because to me that is maybe the critical point of, of the messages to the seven churches. And by the way, if you're looking to find this in the Bible, it's in Revelation chapters two and three, mm -hmm. these, these seven messages. And what's really interesting, if you have a Bible with red letter ink that um, denotes the, the words of Jesus, you'll notice when you get to Revelation two and three, there's a whole lot of red ink there. Mm -hmm. That's true. Well, Marcus, we close out this morning. Would you lead us in a word of prayer? The Father, as Mary Alice just said, we want you to uh, look into our hearts, as David said in the Old Testament, to uh, search us and see if there's anything inside of us that we've got self-deception going on. We don't want to be like the church at Laodicea. We're grateful for the blessings. We're grateful for what you do for us uh, here in America. We are the most blessed people in the world, but we pray that that blessing will not lure us into um, an absence of passion for your kingdom. Help us to use our blessing as an opportunity to be radical as Christ followers. And we'll give you the praise and glory in Jesus name. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for praying for us, Mark. I was re reminded of a, a saying that you had some time back that blessed people are blessed. To bless people. people. That's right. And uh, what, a, what a privilege it is if God gives us the opportunity to bless others. And I know everyone at New Spring is a very generous person and we're so thankful to be part of what God is doing at this uh, at this place. That's right. So. Well, thank you for joining us today on Noah's Wind Day, and God willing, we'll be back tomorrow. Yes, we love you guys. We'll see you tomorrow. God bless.